And I think we are live. Welcome to the weekly Kelly's Closet Cloth Plus Chat. I'm Callie, and we are joined today with Jenny from the Cloth Diaper Revival, and she is also our assistant um, on Facebook. And then we have, do you go by Jen or Jennifer from um, Spray Pal? Yeah. Usually Jen. Jen. So yeah. we have Jen joining us from Spray Pal. And today we're going to talk about our favorite topic. Ooh. Yay! <laughs> um, and it looks like a lot of you are joining us today, so welcome. Um, hopefully you guys have, some of you have been with us uh, several times. We do have a Q&A session if you're on Google Plus with us live where you can ask us your questions. Um, we will answer them live on the air. If you are not joining us live and watching this uh, streaming on YouTube or um, recorded on YouTube or Facebook, uh, we'll post questions, answers, um, we'll answer them now. So anyway, uh, so let's do a quick introduction with Jen from SprayPal. What can you tell us about SprayPal and how you guys got started? Well, um, it was three years ago. My, my oldest daughter, who is three and a half now, was just starting solids and we, of course, wanted a way to manage the poop that was going to be coming along with that because we were kind of used to the breastfed, easy to throw in the laundry poop. So we got a sprayer and we tried it out and we seriously thought we must be doing something wrong because we were making such a huge mess. And, you know, we went online and did some research and there were things saying, well, you just need to perfect your technique and you just need to turn the water pressure lower, which meant that the stuff was like not coming off. So we, um, my husband's kind of like known in our circle of friends as being very MacGyver-ish. So he was like, I'm going to make something to just contain this splatter so we can just spray it full force and, and get the poop out and not worry about it. And I was like, you go ahead and do that. <laughs> and, um, and he did. And so we kind of like, once he had the first prototype, it was actually very effective. And we kind of tweaked it together to make it so it had the doors and you could unsnap it and all these things, little features to make it easier. And um, we told some of our cloth diapering friends about it and they were like, that's genius. You have to sell it. You have to get it to the market and so you know we're teachers we didn't know anything about running a business or any of it and we just decided to go for it and see what happened and um, yeah it has become a, a useful thing for many people just you know they found the same use out of it as we did so we got you know we got really lucky so that was I it. I really wish you had been around for a five years ago when we were diapering. <laughs> um, we've been out of diapers now for two years, which is two and a half years, which is really hard to believe. Um, wow. But I hated spraying diapers. In yeah. fact, I rarely use my diaper sprayer because I hated it so much. Mm -hmm. um, so I really wish you had been around. What about you, Jenny? I don't have a spray pal. Well, we're potty training now, too. But my husband likes spraying diapers. I don't know why. He thought it was cool. So <laughs> I just left everything for him and let him deal with it most of the time. My we husband, a lot of that. The guys are the ones that are really into it. But they love the spray pal, too, because they can use all that pressure and be like, yeah. You know. <laughs> I think there's even a blog post on my blog where he said something about how it's like some laser or something. I don't know. And I'm like, oh, God. you're such a dork. It's such a guy thing. Yeah. <laughs> they like the power and the force behind it. So and the spray powder. And then, they, of course, they don't want to clean up the mess they make, and they leave it for you. So, Or my husband does anyway. So. <laughs> oh, see, my husband, my husband would leave the dirty diapers in the bathroom and, <laughs> wait, and wait for me to um, come yeah. home. Yeah. Which was fine. I was like, whatever. <laughs> At that point, uh, he, he was doing diapers. I didn't really care. <laughs> yeah, that's always true. I think a lot of people leave them for the end of the day and spray them all at once just to get that chore kind of separated and over with, you know? But Right, right. You know, we're spray-as-we-go kind of family. <laughs> <laughs> spray-as-he-goes, I guess we should say. <laughs> so um, tell us about how you guys started making them. Did you just start... Uh, come up with some prototypes and start making them at home? 
How are you guys yeah. making them now? We did. We, um, we started with a prototype that didn't have hinges and doors. It was pretty much like a trash can with pieces cut out and clips and things. And um, it worked OK, but it was finding a place to store it and things like that. So um, my husband actually used a bunch of like cutting boards and hinges to make a door thing. And he, um, he had like probably five different prototypes, which we still have here because he loves them. He's so proud of them. <laughs> and he just tried everything that would work. And then we made the original batch of Spray Pals was made with this really thick, heavy plastic. It was probably like $10 a box just to ship one. And Oh, gosh. It was crazy. And they were, I mean, we were having them made in this local shop, and, and they were so expensive to make. And But people bought them. Like, the whole batch sold out within a, f a couple of months. So we were like, as those were selling, we were kind of testing the waters just to see if there's even a market for this, if people would want this, or if it's going to help people. And, you know, we got rave reviews. And so we thought we need to use this time to kind of figure out how we can make it more efficiently and effectively. But so it's lighter to ship, but easy to use and not so heavy. And so um, we, we kind of were making them fully at home for a while in my garage. And then it got out of hand, so we had to. I can like, only imagine how crazy that would have been. <laughs> really, really nuts. And this was at the same time, right after my son was born, and he was in the NICU seven months. So we were like taking care of my daughter, going to the NICU every single day, and trying to like make spray pals in our garage. My husband was, and so it it wasn't working. And so that was kind of the push we needed to be like, we got to let some of this go somewhere else, so we can you know, still have time with our family and everything else. And so um, we found a different local shop that um, they do the base part, the plastic, and they silk screen it and fold it and heat press it and, and add the snaps on. And then we still put the clips on in our garage so, to this day, which is nuts. But um, <laughs> it's a lot easier with just that process and not the rest of it. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been such a learning experience for us because... I mean, we're teachers. We're not, we never, ever, ever would have imagined in a million years that this would be what our life would be now. <laughs> I mean, who knew? So, <laughs> so uh, crazy question. Are you going to keep teaching for a while, or do you hope Spray Pal will uh, kick off and be your full time? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I'm actually going to be done teaching this June. Um, and I, I switched to part time after my son was born just because I need to be, it wasn't, for Spray Pal, it was more, I need to be home with him when he came home from the NICU. Um, but we were so lucky that we were making a little bit extra to cover that half of my salary that I wasn't going to be getting anymore And um, through Spray Pal. So as the business has kind of been growing, um, we realized that my half of my salary isn't worth it anymore. I'd rather be home with my kids and working on Spray Pal um, around their schedules. So I will be stopping work in June. And um, my husband is actually taking a, a leave of absence for the rest of this year starting, this is his last week teaching for this school year. We're not sure yet if he'll go back next year or not. But um, he he's doing it more because we need someone here full time because my son will be getting cochlear implants soon. And so that's going to be kind of a big recovery and a lot of therapies and things like that. So we just wanted one of us to be home full time. So he took the rest of his sick days to take the rest of the year off to do that. So, and we'll see if Spray Pal keeps growing. We can maybe work on him not teaching next year too, but we don't know. Well, the way uh, we are selling them at Kelly's Closet, I don't think you're going to have a problem. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish you luck with that one. Thank you. Yes. Do you happen to have one handy near you that you might be able to look and? Let me. Can I run and grab one real quick? You I sure have can. an older one in the bathroom, but um, I'll grab a new one out of the garage. <laughs> and while we wait on uh, Jen to join us back, um, Jenny, how did you guys handle poop? And did you guys always use just the sprayer? Did you use liners? Did you use we, a combination? We had the beauty of the breastfed poop at the beginning, so that was great, and then we got a sprayer, and then when we traveled, we used liners. Um, my mom didn't have a sprayer, which is crazy, because both my sister-in-laws were cloth diapering at the time, so it was like all her grandchildren were using cloth, and you're like, come on, mom, let's get one. Um, but we used liners when we traveled, and sprayers at home. 
we almost exclusively used the liners, the dis mostly the disposable liners. Uh, my husband just thought they were the easiest thing in the world for him. I hated having to always buy them, but it was really convenient just to put it in there and I wouldn't have to listen to him complain about changing diapers Which at all. Which is worth it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have so, a spray powder now. Wonderful. I should probably move the camera back a little bit. This is a bigger thing. Here it is. Yay. <laughs> And so, it's not it's not too big. It fits in what a medium size wet bag. Yeah, it's in a medium size wet bag when it's folded up, and then when you use it and you unsnap it and set it up to actually spray with it, um, it opens up really good. So and you can see it has a nice wide open flexible opening there to get your hand in and spray the diaper out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's it's even got the little clip at the top, right? So that holds your diaper? Yes. This is the clip that holds the diaper. And I mean it's pretty simple. The design <laughs> tried to make it as simple as possible but helpful, you know? So yep. that's pretty much it. And then and Take it and squeeze the door. Since it's so flexible, you can squeeze the diaper out while it's still clipped in when you're done with that it. That is right there why I wish I had one. Because <laughs> squeezing out diapers that were dirty is so disgusting. Yeah. That is genius. Some people skip that step, though. They tell us they just, you know, I just do it with gloves. It's easier not to have to clean up the bathroom after. So I still use the spray pal. And then I just reach in with my gloves on and squeeze it out and drop it in the wet bag. So everybody has kind of their own technique. But it saves the step of cleaning up the splatter that's all over the floor and I've had people email me like I so wish I had a spray pail this morning because I just sprayed a diaper and got poop water all over my pants and my pajamas. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> in there. <laughs> so. Well, while, while we uh, chat, why don't we once again ask our audience if anybody's joining us and has any questions about spray pal or cloth diapers in general, how to handle poop, uh, feel free to ask your questions um, in this Q&A section. I'll check on the wall and make sure nobody's left any questions over there. Um, it, Jen, any tips that you've learned along the way as far as, uh, you know, tips for use that maybe a first-time mom might not get how to use the uh, the spray pal or any kind of, I mean, it's it's pretty simple. I know there's not a lot to it, but. Uh. Yeah. No, there are some definite tips and techniques, though. Um, we, you know, when you, when you take the dirty diaper off, we try to clip the side of the diaper that has the least amount of poop on it so that the poop is lower into the spray pal, not close to the, the top. Um, the other tip is, you know, the first time you use it, you might want to just, get over eager to start spraying right away, but you want to just double check to make sure that the bottom part of the spray pal is under the lip of the, the toilet, because if this okay. is the toilet, it's going to shoot the water right out and defeat the purpose. So <laughs> just do a quick double check. It doesn't have to be actually sitting in the toilet water or on the toilet or anything like that, but you just hold it with one hand by the clip and we hold the sprayer with the other, and then just do a quick mental check that this part is just barely under the lip of the toilet so it all sprays down where it belongs. Um, and I, I know we have we have a YouTube video because we had a lot of people asking us about the free time diapers. Um, that's commonly known as I guess the most difficult diaper to spray out because the flaps that lay in there will kind of flop down and get into the toilet and whatnot. And so we did a demo on that because if you set the flaps a certain way and then clip a certain way, you can spray and use gravity leaning the spray pal back a little bit. The water pressure and Leaning this back will kind of keep those flaps in place and you just spray it off. We have a couple free times in our stash, so um, we have some experience with it. But. Kelly, did we lose you? Yeah, I see a, I see a Kelly's closet over there. Yeah, I think we may have lost her. No, I am still oh, here. Yeah. Oh, I hear her. I, I forgot to plug my computer in since I'm sitting <laughs> outside. And I didn't want you to lose me. <laughs> So I'm still here and now I'm plugged in. So 
Uh, well, those are definitely some, some good tips that I probably would not have thought about right away since I haven't ever used one. <laughs> um, any, are there any other diapers other than um, the free time that tend to give people, you know, just different learning curves with the Spray Pal? Or? Um, I think there's, there's some diapers, maybe the fitted, that are a little bit thicker and are harder to get into the clip, so we tell people, you know, just be kind of gentle with the clip and just work it in there. Don't don't try to push the clip too far open because you risk, you know, breaking the clip and whatnot. So it's not meant to go too far open, but yeah. um, you can kind of just do one side and then the other and slowly work it in and it'll get in there fine. Um, the other thing we hear is that people use, you know, you guys were talking about liners. A lot of people will use uh, fleece liners. Right. And those are reusable, and once you have the poop on them, they need to be sprayed or rinsed off, too. And so um, this is kind of great for that because that's pretty hard to spray in a toilet without anything shielding right. it. Right. It's a thin and flimsy thing. So you can clip your, your fleece liners, your cloth wipes, um, mama cloth, anything that's smaller and harder to spray off that you want to rinse out first before you wash it. Um, this works great for that, too, because it provides, like, a nice hard back for it to just really get the water pressure and spray it off. Um, so that's another tip too if you're using fleece liners. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I wish I had, I should have compiled a list of questions we always commonly get on our wall. <laughs> but I think we covered most of them. Most people just want to know. A lot of people ask what our favorite diaper sprayer is. I don't know if we want to discuss that one. Um, we, we can talk about that because we do have I mean, it's a very common question. Uh, we have the Bum Genius Diaper Sprayer. We have the Blueberry Flow. Mm -hmm. We have the Aquas by Rinseworks. Mm -hmm. And the Nicker Nappies Diaper Sprayer. So we do have all four of those options. Personally, I have the Nicker Nappies. It's the only one that I'm personally familiar with. I never had any problems with it. Mm -hmm. um, what about you? We use the Bum Genius sprayer and the same thing. I never had a problem with it. I've been using it for over three years since we started with my daughter and um, and it's been great. And I've also heard great things about the flow that you mentioned. So um, we've kind of been looking into that one because I've been seeing a lot of reviews on it and a lot of good demo videos of that one. So, um, But other than that, I don't have any experience with any of the other ones. So, Jenny, which one did you use? I have Knicker Nappies um, and the flow came out shortly after we got ours and I was like oh that looks so nice and it's like it's just got really cool features um, right but the knicker nappies is all, like I haven't had a single problem so so um, ours ours is still attached to the toilet and we've been out of diapers for two years we use it for um, when the kids get sick you want to like spray off the throw up and whatever um, I'll actually take it and spray off dirty shoes, like if they come in with muddy shoes from school, I'll use it to spray down their shoes. Um, any unusual uses for diaper sprayers around your house? Not yet. I mean, we've used it for throw up for sure, but um, we don't have a whole lot of, I, I've been hearing people say about the muddy clothes and things like that after soccer. My daughter's at soccer right now, so, but it's, so it's not raining enough here in California, <laughs> so we don't have enough mud, but Definitely for sick kids, I've heard a lot of a lot of good reviews about getting their vomit away easily with a sprayer. So, uh, let's see. We've got about five more minutes uh, for anybody who is joining us and doesn't really know much about Spray Pal. Um, we do have them for sale at Kelly's Closet, uh, which is just Kelly'sCloset.com, and it's twenty four ninety five. Um, and then we always have free shipping on any orders of $49 or more um, in the United States. And that does exclude Alaska and Hawaii. Um, there's a little extra charge for shipping to those areas. Uh, we always have some really cool coupons for uh, free gifts with purchase, which is awesome. Um, let's see. What? Let's ask you some crazy questions. What was... Or what is your current favorite diaper? Um, my current favorite is, it's hard to pick one favorite, but I love the Lullaby Baby. And I wouldn't have even known about her if she hadn't like reached out to me and said, you've got to try this. And I tried it, and I was like, oh my god, this is my new favorite. 
But um, we have a list of favorites, too. We love, you know, there's certain diapers that work for certain times of the day, overnight, and going out, and things like that. So we like, we really like the Rockabums. I don't know if you guys have tried those. Um, yeah, we have. Love Sloom um, and Sustainable Babyish. And we use a bunch of Bum Genius and Grovia. I mean, we have a big mix of a stash, so. So you're, you're pretty much like both of us. I think we've tried just about everything on the market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to resist. So many different prints and things you're like, okay, I'll try that one now because that one has the cute one that I want or whatnot. And I try not to be too, like, obsessed. And I don't I, – I haven't bought a new diaper in forever. But I, I'm happy with where my stash is. Actually, I take that back. I bought Rovia Pudge because I thought it was so cute. <laughs> But, I mean, we have a big enough stash now that I don't need to get crazy buying anything new, so. Right. Yeah. Uh, so what's, uh, what's the future with Spray Pal? Do you guys have any fun events going on soon or any special yeah. appearances that you're going to? Yeah, we, um, we go to or we try to go to all the MommyCon events. So I will be flying out for MommyCon San Francisco in April. Um, this coming weekend, I will be at an event in Oceanside for Baby Fest. We'll have a booth. My whole family's going to that one, so I'm pretty excited. And you know, Kim from Dirty Diaper Laundry will be there. And um, should be a fun one. And then Granola Babies, our local retailer, is doing a, a OC Pregnancy and Beyond event in May, and we'll be at that. And we're going to ABC Kids this year for the first time. So, are you doing the fall event or the spring event, or both? Fall, just the fall. Okay, cool. Well, we'll definitely see you again there. <laughs> um, are you doing a great di great cloth diaper change in your area? Um, that's a good question. We there is one in our area. I think there's a couple this year, but um, we might be at the MommyCon Austin great cloth diaper change event. So it all depends on when they finally search or schedule my son's cochlear implant surgery. So if it's right before that, uh, I'll be staying local. And if he's able to come with me, I would actually like to be able to change him again. So we've done it every three, the last three years, all years. I did my daughter the first two years and then my son last year. And hopefully I'll get to do him again this year. But if I'm in Austin, I'll have well, to borrow a, a surrogate baby <laughs> to change for the event. <laughs> Well, the very, the very first year of the Great Cloth Diaper Change, um, I was asked to be a witness to uh, an event here in Tampa. So I could not change my daughter, which actually worked out okay because she um, was with her grandparents that weekend. So I didn't feel bad about, I mean, I felt bad that we couldn't be a part of it that way, but I was still a part of it. Yeah. And then um, now that she's five and I don't have a baby left in diapers, uh, <laughs> this year Kelly's Closet is going to be sponsoring or co-hosting the Pinellas County Great Cloth Diaper Change here in Largo, Florida uh, with Molly Suds and Kim from Dirty Diaper Laundry. So we're cool. kind of excited about that. That's our. This will be our first year actually hosting it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And maybe Jenny will get to join me too. <laughs> I don't know. We will see. We have to, to talk her husband into extending her vacation a little bit longer. <laughs> We're on vacation, and I finally get to meet Callie, and, but it's like the last day of vacation, so I have a feeling he's going to flip out. I kind of mentioned it once, and he was like, are you kidding? You can't work. <laughs> so. It doesn't work, though, right? It's not work. It's socializing two and a half hours away from where we're going to be. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not super close, but it's not super far away. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Well, Jen, we want to thank you so much for joining us. It looks like we've hit our 30 minutes, and um, we appreciate you coming on and talking about Spray Pal, and we're really excited to see where you guys have come, and we're really happy to carry um, Spray Pal at Kelly's Closet. Um, our customers love it. I mean, we can't get enough raves about, about your company, so. Thank um, you. We love having you guys on board, so. Well, you guys have a great day, and everyone who joined us or is watching us in uh, repeat on video, thank you so much for joining us. We will be here every Wednesday uh, throughout the year uh, from 1 to 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and um, have a great day. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.